Hi, everyone. It's been a while since I've had a picture book author on the program. I've kind of delved into the world of comics for a while, and there are several, as you scroll through the list of episodes, several picture book authors that have been on at different points, but glad to be back talking in the world of picture books this week with Anne-Marie Stevens. Anne-Marie, thank you for jumping in and joining from your your lovely space here with your books displayed and uh, Be a Nice Human displayed. Uh, really appreciate what you've done with the space. Thank you so much. It's my laundry room. So half is my office and has the cute display and the other half has laundry hanging up and a basket that needs some done. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find that it's easier to write when the laundry is done? That's a, that's an you know, unofficial question. <laughs> yeah. It, it's really, I don't feel a connection, but I will say I get a lot more laundry done because I'm in here. So oh. you can't help but see the pile and think, well, I can go ahead and throw that in while I'm working on this book. So I, mm -hmm. I do keep up with it pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so curious about, I always like to ask about that connection to the written word. What was it that connected you? I think this is the English teacher in me that always wants to hear this story of, you know, what was that spark for you? I think that it probably goes back to, well, first of all, reading a lot of books when I was little and just <clears throat> being fortunate enough to have them in my home and, of course, being exposed at school. But I really started writing stories when I was four. My mom has actually saved some of those, and and I recently found them, and, and they're just random scraps of paper. Most of the time when I first started, it was just telling my parents how much I loved them, so every page was you know, different ways to write, I love you. Mm -hmm. And I would either close pin them together or paper clip them together and make books. And then as I learned more words and sentences and things like that, I was writing um, stories. I was writing letters. I was writing poems. And it just seemed to be the way that I best expressed myself, especially letters writing letters to my parents or sending letters to a friend who had moved away. And then in fifth grade, I was writing stories. And I remember I had written one about my dog who had recently died. And my fifth grade teacher had us read them aloud. And when I read mine, <clears throat> she got teary eyed. And it hit me that like, wow, words are, are powerful. I've, I've like, my teacher has had this emotion on my story. It's not even her dog. And mm -hmm. so I think from there, I just realized that you can do a lot with words. You can do a lot to, you know, change the world and and affect people's emotions. And I, I believe that's probably how it started. I love that. Yeah, I love that story. And um, words are definitely powerful. And thinking about your work in picture books, um, I always like to say there, there's something poetic about picture books because you have to choose just the right words. And then, of course, there's the image to go with it. So curious about what that particular uh, format allows you to do in the stories that you want to tell. Well, like you said, picture books are what we call an economy of words. Every single word counts. And, and there's times when you take days and even weeks to you know, get the right sentence or get the right phrase or find the right word. Picture books, you know, I feel like you can create any kind of character you want and nobody can really say, oh, that's ridiculous or that's silly because you expect that to be able to happen in a picture book. And you can have these wacky plots and our our problems can have just unlimited solutions. And <clears throat> I also feel like you can talk about difficult subjects and important subjects and that you can handle them in um, digestible ways. You know, and sometimes picture books, even when they're about some kind of a difficult subject, they help adults because it's not this big, long uh, explanation or um, something that makes it too complicated. So it might sound a little bit aspirational, but I do believe picture books can change lives. I, if you think about it, we're reading them to our youngest, our most impressionable people. And if they can see themselves in a character or relate to a character or have some kind of confirmation or affirmation that they're not the only ones dealing with a certain problem, or if they can learn something from a picture book, 
that can really, you know, change their, their track. And, um, I just, I think picture books are really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Agreed. Well, thinking about your story of your fifth grade teacher, that emotional moment of connection, uh, I don't think it's an understatement or an overstatement at all to say that, that books change lives and picture books, definitely, uh, early entry. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You also have an author superpower. As I look back over your shoulder at these arithmetic books, um, you you have taken on the task of creating picture books that deal with something math related. And so that's that's kind of an interesting thing to me because I, math was never my strong suit. I'll, I'll just go ahead and admit that. But um, there are not a lot of books that sort of weave together narrative and numeracy in that way. So curious about how you went about that process. Well, first of all, thank you for acknowledging <laughs> that math isn't, you know, super easy to weave into anything, right? I will confess <laughs> it is absolutely not my favorite subject. Um I I have never liked math. And that's quite comical because now I actually have two math series um, <laughs> in picture books. So I, I liked math early on and I was actually very good at it. And, um, I was like, like tracking ahead. Right. And I stopped understanding it and stopped liking it when it got to the point where it was no longer relevant to me. Mm -hmm. Teachers did not show me why I needed calculus, why I needed trigonometry. So tri trigonometry, trigonometry, there we you go. Got it. I can say it. I just can't do it. <laughs> uh, so I think really that's when I, my brain kind of shut it down and I was, I was never somebody who was going to like it that much anyway, but I was in my classroom and I had done a project with uh, the class, did some uh, chicks, like just a cute craft. And we worked it into arithmetic problems. And I thought, oh, these are like arithmetic chicks. And I just wrote it down, thought it was catchy. And I think it was seven years later, I came up with the idea just from my idea journal uh, to write the book. But what was most important to me was to find a way to do what you said, where it wasn't a mathy book and it wasn't just a story. I wanted it to be a balance of both because a lot of the books that I was trying to read to my students were either too mathy or too much story and they weren't getting the math out of it. Mm -hmm. And I I wrote Arithmetic's Add Up and Arithmetic's Takeaway. And then I thought that was going to be it, which you know would have been fine for me because I didn't want to do too much math. And then my editor and my publisher asked if I'd write four more. So I agreed to do that. And then, of course, the catastrophe book came out, which is Cats Doing Math. And then they asked for four more of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turns out I'm doing a lot of math books for a girl who doesn't like math. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you know, the sometimes that's the best person to speak on the matter, I think, to say, hey, here's the way to, to approach this and uh, to sort of get the way in. And Chicks and Cats, it's not a bad way in. Yeah, well, and I think the whole idea of making math relevant, you know, the chicks as of now, they have shown how you can do math when you're in the mountains, when you're at the fair, when you're at your house, when you're outside on a playground, and you really can do these things that the chicks are doing. Mm -hmm. So it, it helps kids to be able to see that math is all around us. And it's not just something that you go and do in a classroom and then go home and not have it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to take a question here about author visits as well. Is that something that you um, promote, engage with, do um, work with? And if so, second part of the question, has there been a time that you've been on an author visit and connected with a young reader in, in a really interesting, um, maybe memorable way? Yes. Yeah, so I just recently retired as an elementary teacher of 31 years. So mm -hmm. during that time, author visits were pretty difficult to do. Every once in a while, I would get a night event, uh, but I, I normally couldn't do them during the day. Uh, but I do actually have uh, some recent 
uh, social media post about my author visits because I am starting to book more of those. And it's there's information on my website all about the different kinds of presentations I do. Uh, yeah, so the ones I've done so far, we have done some math with, with some uh, giant wooden numbers and the kids are always so excited to be a part of, you know, solving problems uh, as a group in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. And I do think one of my books that's now out of print, Side Makes a Friend, I had something so great happen with that. I was reading and uh, at a, an event for the Washington Post and this character had trouble making friends and all of his friends were imaginary. And at one point when the story says um, that he can't make friends and it shows the kind of friends he can make, make, which was just the imaginary friends, a little boy came up right in the middle of the story and grabbed my leg and he said, he's just like me, all my friends are imaginary. Aww. And I thought, oh my gosh, like, what is that about? And later his dad came up to me and told me he was autistic and that he didn't really have any friends at that time, that he was having trouble making friends. And to have him relate to that character in my book and to, you know, kind of shout out to me about it, that was something I think I'll always remember. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And, and as you said, books have that power for changing lives and connecting with readers. Yeah. 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 So curious about, you mentioned the website, so we should mention that. And also curious about creative spaces uh, or ideas moving forward, the the ideas that you're currently circling and sort of working on. So I have, like I mentioned, four more cat books coming out that are about different kinds of math. So we're pretty much in the uh, final and finished stages of those uh, just doing tiny little edits here and there. And those will come out in 2025. Mm -hmm. So it's a while to wait, but they'll be good when they come. Uh, I also just recently got a contract for a book. I can't tell any details about it because it hasn't been announced yet. It'll be announced any time now. And, and I'm excited because the book's not math. <laughs> <laughs> and I can say the book is actually about books. So that will be... Nice. Uh, you know, kind of an opposite type thing for me and and very exciting. And it's a collaboration with another author friend of mine. So yeah, that, that will be announced soon. And I'm always working on several stories at a time. I am um, working on a beginning reader series and a couple of other picture books and a poetry book and uh, hoping that that will uh, all work out and and I try to to do them I follow my my mood or my you know creative space to know which ones I want to work on at what time mm -hmm. and then my agent has some stories that she's shopping as well so fingers crossed that more things fall into place and as far as my uh, website or social media stuff I do have a website annemariestevensbooks.com and on there, I have, oh, just everything. I mean, I have all of my books, but I also have lots of different presentations, which I do for pre-K to fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And then I also do uh, PD, professional development uh, workshops and sessions with staff, seeing as how uh, I recently was a member of a school staff. Uh -huh. And I did a lot of workshops as I was a teacher too. So it's something I'm I'm quite used to doing and, and comfortable doing. And then I'll have some testimonials on there for people to read if they'd like to just see a little bit about what I've done and, and the impact that it's made. And then I'm also on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Well, not Twitter, let's say X and Instagram and Blue Sky and Facebook so people can find me there too and and see what I'm up to. Well, sounds wonderful. And uh, I appreciate that role of educator that you've had and continue to have. And uh, the fact that you're continuing to be involved in professional development as well. That's very helpful for uh, educators to hear the perspective of an author who has also been an educator for a considerable amount of time. So send, sending love to that work as well. Thank you. Yeah, I did a, a, a PD workshop in Vermont not too long ago, and that was one of the things that uh, the, the staff said in response was, you get it. 
you know mm-hmm. what we're going through. You understand what we're feeling, which I know, you know, as a teacher, sometimes you sit in those workshops and you feel like the presenter just doesn't understand what it is that we go through or, you know, what we've dealt with. So it is, it is nice to be able to talk to my kind of people during those times. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wonderful to talk with you. Anything that we've missed in the talk through that you want to make sure to share before we close? I can't think so. I feel like you've kind of hit on all the important things and, and helped, you know, bring about the idea of math in a, in a, I guess, more friendly way. (laughs) And that is definitely once more a superpower to, to work that into a a picture book and to make it engaging. So I appreciate that work as well. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'll let you get back to um, whatever book and current um, load of laundry that you're working on. (laughs) (laughs) I'm also doing laundry. So we are in solidarity, solidarity on that. Um, But thanks so much for jumping in and talking with me. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.